Events like the Paralympic Games prove that disability is not a barrier to success. But another arena where disabled people have been excelling for years are the arts. Disabled people are now coming together on an international basis and working together to push the boundaries of their creative endeavours. I'm here at Grey Eye Theatre Company to find out more about this phenomenon as disability arts goes global. So Jodie, tell me about the projects that you've been involved with internationally with Grey Eye. The main ones have been um, the project we did in Pakistan, in Karachi, um, in collaboration with British Council and other partners, um, and some work we did also with British Council in Sri Lanka. Um, a, a project in Pakistan was uh, basically trying to um, develop a f performing arts training program for young deaf and disabled people. Um, uh, lots of partners involved um, across sort of four to five stages. Um, and then our work in Sri Lanka was around um, not just young people but um, whole communities um, working with um, adults, working with young people and also working with their parents as well. Um, there is an organisation in Karachi called, um, I hope this is right, NOWPD, um, which is an organisation that's actually for um, uh, disabled people who are actually changing policy around quotas, around, you know, employment, training, and we learnt a lot from just having a, you know, half a day talking with them. Um, and then there's just brilliant little arts companies happening, um, artists that have just come together and actually getting paid. Um, you know, they might have to apply for funding, but they're doing it all for the love of it. What, from your experience, in each of the countries you've visited, what does it mean to be disabled? Every country is different, but I re remember arriving in Bangladesh. Big group of wonderfully diverse people in physicality, communication, age, gender. Beautiful mixed group of people. So my first job with my Bangladeshi law is be who you are. I can't. You're not going to change, but what you can change is your own attitude about yourself and your, it sounds a bit mad, but your acceptance of who you are and start to use that as a theatrical and a political tool to make a statement. It's those deaf and disabled people who have been through a whole series of long term. Yeah, long-term workshops and two plays with Grey Eye, that sort of seed bedded them to think we want to lead our own work and so they are. And Slow Label, Dapper Clean Hour is run by Chris, or was stuffed up by Chris, a disabled woman, and a Zacco, Theatre for the Deaf. It's about confidence, so it doesn't really matter if someone who's non-disabled starts it, but it's about at what point they hand over the power and empowerment to deaf and disabled people to live themselves. Two thousand and nine. Yep, that was when we first. I flew over actually to Britain, and I was studying and learning. Um, over here in Britain and I got involved in Grey Eye whilst I was there and the reason that that happened the involvement with Grey Eye was because um, let me just think um, it's, it's disa disabled people working in the arts you know and how to sort of encourage them and be creative within the arts and I wanted to learn from Grey Eye and therefore be able to take what I'd learned back to my own country in Japan and therefore be able to teach and improve the lives of disabled people within the arts in Japan. So I got involved um, really to kind of like um, shadow um, Jenny and the people at Grey Eye to find out how they worked creatively and I worked with them and they work with disabled people obviously as well a variety of disabled people deaf and disabled people so I wanted to learn from them and uh, use um, Grey Eye really as a role model it was a really good experience for me definitely what's really interesting I think is they're not just arts organisations they are disability rights organisations I think that's really really key 
because what it allows what it allows those organizations to do like Vidya Sagar who are out in uh, in India and Rasa you know they they use the arts for a force for change so tell me about the project that you're working on in India what's that um it's a it's a it's a project where um it's a co-production with Lafura del Spaus who um Grail worked with in 2012 um Prometheus Awakes um down at the uh, Queen's House in Greenwich uh, so we're working with them again it's a um the the production's called uh, Arun and the Raging Sun um and it's based on a on a on an indian myth um about a, a, a an indian disabled boy who kind of saves the world um so um we're using we're using that as an inspiration to kind of tell this story we've got about 100 uh, disabled and non-disabled um performers in it um there's lots of aerial work um 50 meters in the air we've got like a 28 meter puppet you know just chilling out around chennai the, the marina beach uh walking around um big large scale kind of projection why is it so important to do this international work i think more than anything we it's again going back to that um connecting to artists beyond our our bubbles um we support each other so brilliantly here in the uk in disability arts but Yeah, it's like how do we reach out and and connect to other deaf and disabled artists around the world? So, um, you know, absolutely when a grey eye is working internationally, it's not about hey, let's just like swoop in there and do our thing and leave again. That that would be a failure if that was what all that we did. I think disabled people are problem solvers. Are going to go. We we're, we're constantly problem solving. So when we're presented with something and I think that's why you know we're very very fortunate to go and work in all these countries but i think part of the reason part of that reason genuinely is is, is that we we problem solve um very very quickly and the response that we get with the artists that we're working with is just is just just exactly the same so that very 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 first meeting kept me going for the last kept going for four years with all my work in Bangladesh and at the end when we did Romeo and Juliet we filmed uh disabled street people just talking about what does love mean to them and what were their hopes and their dreams so that 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 message never really left me from that very first day and sort of it was just a start a tiny little start of the film as a campaign to wake up people's understanding of what the situation is what was what was the response of the public in the countries that you visited to the work that you put on well bangladesh we had the the national theater of dhaka the the producer of the national theater he was our producer so he was someone of very high up with a high status huge respect so he's a freedom fighter so you know he's part of a big political movement it's his stage and uh, the minister of culture is a very very famous um famous uh bangladesh actor we had his backup so you know they smashed walls down so that we could build a ramp into the um onto the stage and into the auditorium and for the first time in history disabled people were in the audience and on the stage with all 17 disabled people on stage first ever in Bangladesh it was extraordinary and you could feel this ripple across the audience of just that it's all right this is good and i'm hoping what with this production uh non-disabled people who either have an experience of disability or don't can look at it and kind of go wow this is this is this is something we wouldn't have seen 5 years ago but we're seeing now Grey Eye Theatre Company supported using public funding by Arts Council England with thanks to British Council for support of international projects and footage International footage by Grey Scale, Charlotte Invert and Stray Factory Photo credits Patrick Baldwin, Andrea Testoni and Eduardo Martino. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Grey Eye and Instagram at Grey Eye Theatre Company.